today in Focus, the Canon EOS R3. I think that the sensor inside this camera is maybe one of the best that Canon's produced to date. And let me explain that. This camera is both very good at high dynamic range situations, and at the same time, it seems to be quite good with low light. So it's possible to shoot with really not much to work with light wise, and you can crank up that ISO and I think successfully get a decent image out of this camera. Now, as you watch this, I want to mention the DxO Mark article where they've rated the sensor in the Canon EOS R3 as the best low light sensor of any full frame camera that is high ISO performance. I didn't initially believe it, but after concluding these tests, I'm going to tell you, I think it's true. Comparing the sensor in this camera to what was previously considered the low light king, this A7S III by Sony, I have to say I would give the edge to the Canon EOS R3. I honestly believe it's that good, but what do you think? Please comment below and let me know your opinion. Even in the images where I show a noise reduction being applied, keep in mind at no point do I exceed, I believe it's six in DaVinci Resolve's noise reduction, which is a very, very, very low setting. Did I mention that I believe Canon really, really knocked it out of the park with the EOS R3? I think it's possible that what we're looking at may well be one of the best mirrorless sensors to date. I'm not just talking about ISO. The dynamic range out of this sensor is very, very good. Much better than I can recall of Canon cameras from the past, such as the EOS R5. Indeed, I would say that the dynamic range from the sensor easily rivals that of the DGO sensored Canon C70. Your readout speeds are very good, meaning that there's minimal rolling shutter, meaning that it's just gonna be better for a lot of fast action or even things where you're moving the camera, panning maybe, or following a subject. It's gonna be less jarring for your audience. I love the control that the, that the 6K RAW, the Canon RAW light is giving you. There's a lot of tweakability within that codec. Just look at the shot, 20,000 ISO, and all it takes is a dab of noise reduction and it cleans up. On the horizon, we all know it's coming, is of course the new Canon R1. Now I've been hearing whisperings about that camera and the two main things that stuck in my head was I believe someone said it was gonna have a 54 megapixel sensor. I've also been hearing that it may have a rolling shutter as low as two milliseconds, which is, that's as good as, as anything. I mean, honestly, I don't think the goal is a global shutter. Now, the Red Komodo has a global shutter and it's great, but I don't really feel that that necessarily mimics film because film actually is rolling shutter. A lot of you may not know that, but it is. It's not a global shutter, it's rolling shutter because essentially there's a, a disc and it has a cutout in the disc and that cutout is where the film is exposed to light. So as the cutout moves across that opening, it actually exposes a piece, each, uh, uh, I guess a slither of film at a time. So this mimics the action of rolling shutter where the whole sensor isn't exposed at once, but rather is exposed piece by piece, as opposed to being a true global shutter. But to me, film is the gold standard. So I don't think that it will be a bad thing if Canon actually comes out with a very, very fast rolling shutter. And this, this would be tremendously fast. I mean, I think prior to that, and I'm not sure what the rolling shutter measures on the R3. I'm not sure that there's been anyone that, me that measured it yet. Um, but previous to the R3, the fastest going for rolling shutter, I think might have been the, the Sony a7S III. 
camera I formerly had, a good camera. Um, and I never worried about jello effect on that camera or, or um, the skewing that may take place. It wasn't a concern because I think it was somewhere to the order of eight milliseconds, maybe a little more, maybe a little less. Uh, well, not less than eight milliseconds, but around eight milliseconds, which is fast enough, practically fast enough for anything you'd want to do. So this camera, the R3, I think might be just as fast, maybe even faster than the A7S III. The big deal is that it's doing it with a sensor, which is a much higher resolution. So that's, that's a tremendous effort. If the new Canon R1 will indeed be, I believe they're saying around 50, 54, 55 megapixels, somewhere around about, and actually have two millisecond rolling shutter, then this would be this would be a breakthrough and if it can carry over the dynamic range or improve upon the dynamic range of the r3 and let me put that into perspective from what i'm seeing the r3 has similar close to i'm not sure which way it falls more or less than the c70 and the c70 of course has a dual gain sense a dual gain output sensor which is taken from the Canon C300 Mark III. So you're on about a very, very flexible sensor in that camera. For the R3 to come near that is amazing. Absolutely amazing. For it to do that, they were still being very good at low light. And I'm on about very, very good, a usable up to 10,000 ISO, maybe more than that, 25,000 in a pinch, but seriously usable at 10,000 ISO, I think is a, a huge leap forward, not just for Canon, but for, Canons, but for cameras in general. My Sony a7S III at 10,000 ISO didn't look great. You, when The moment you would get up to about 1,600 ISO, noise became an issue with that camera. And at that point, you were looking at jumping into the second base gain up at 12,800. The only issue I had with that, and it was an issue, mind you, was the fact that once you jump up to that 12,800, a very heavy handed noise reduction was applied to the image and there was no way to turn it off. And even going into the, F, the FX6, which I also owned and a great camera again, it just wasn't a good experience having this massive gap in the ISO range where you had to then jump to the next base ISO, um, the next base ISO setting, which is all the way up at 12,800. I really think that they could have more evenly spaced it or maybe had three base ISOs. But what Canon's done with this camera is to not have a base ISO, but have progressive gain and the, the kind of noise that you get at each gain stage is predictable, is reasonable, which makes the whole image more usable. And then ugly things like the shifting color that happen in some cameras where it may sh turn a uh, shift to very green or a shift to very magenta as you turn up the ISO. I haven't noticed this to be a particular problem at any reasonable ISO, and I consider reasonable ISO, all the way up to 25,000, realistically. I try not to shoot above 6,200, 6, what is it, 62, 6,500, whatever it is. I try not to get above that. Um, usually when I'm pushing it, you're on about 10,000, maybe 12,800. But at any of those ISO ranges, from the bare minimum up until the, the lofty heights of 25,000, you're getting a very progressive, predictable, usable, and somewhat organic grain structure. This makes the R3, I think in many ways, probably the best low light camera, mirrorless hy hybrid, and certainly better than all of the cinema cameras uh, that I've used, that I've seen, that I know of, as far as ISO performance. For dynamic range, I think it is up there. I think this is one to contend with. And I'm quite certain it's probably going to beat the Sony's, A1 included, and certainly will be beating things like the A7S III. Um, and we'll be hanging right there with the C70. So what does this mean? If you're on the fence, you're thinking C70, you're thinking 
do I go with the R3? It depends. It really comes down to you as a shooter. If you're shooting and you're going to be shooting stills and you're also going to be shooting video, you'd be an idiot to get a C70. <laughs> because if you're pulling stills, I believe they're like, what are they like? Maybe um, 8.2 or 9 point some megapixel stills. Plus you're getting a smaller sensor. This is a way better camera if that's your goal. If you're looking for the ultimate in high quality video, again, go with the R3. Because video to video, the R3 is going to give a much better image than the C70. It's a higher resolution, it's downsampled, it's, it's a cleaner image, the autofocus is better, it doesn't care about different complexions, it just works. I would say if that's your goal, then again, the R3 is the win. If you want all the niceties, uh, the bigger LCD screen at the back, if you need all the waveform monitors and all the various video controls, and you want built-in XLRs, granted, mini XLRs, then the C70 starts to become the animal for you. It's particularly, the biggest strength for the C70, in my mind, is probably the built-in ND filters. But beyond that, I think, if you are looking more for build quality, weather sealing, robustness, this is a camera you don't want to have to baby, you want to be able to take it anywhere, get ultimate quality, this right now, this Canon R3, the one that's filming me now, by the way, with a manual lens, Voigtlander, 50mm, at f3.5. Some of you may know which Voigtlander that is, but in any case, this camera that's filming me right now, I think is probably the best that Canon has made to date. If you enjoyed this content, feel free to go ahead, like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell, and I'll catch you next time.